Hi guys, my name is Robert McWilliams and today we're going to talk about donuts, technology and love. <laughs> Beauty queens were used as marketing aids uh, in the 1950s. Uh, this actually inspired me to make a cheesecake donut. <laughs> but, but donuts were really served to, to royalty, and this is the first known picture of donuts in 1627. Uh, Philip II of, of Spain ate those. Donuts were really expensive because sugar and oil and the cooking apparatus was very expensive. So typically, the only time a, an ordinary person had a donut was at a festival. This is Flanders in, in again, the 1600s. And you can see they're cooking up over there in the corner there. And donuts were festival food, and typically you never had a donut your whole life. And, and what happened is you needed a different technologic uh, landscape to make donuts. So this <laughs> is a dynamo, and this, when you electrified the country, uh, you initially did it for light, but, but after the, technical the electrical infrastructure was there, then people began developing stoves and, and uh, stuff you could cook with. At the same time, you also opened up the high plains to rapid development, and you, you got cheap oil, vegetable oil, and you got cheap uh, flour. So, so all the ingredients were together to make donuts, and the next slide is a picture of a primitive donut fryer. This is one of the first donut fryers ever made. That apparatus at the top is a donut dropper. It, that actually scares the hell out of me. It looks like it would start a fire. <laughs> so, I mean, you could design the fire around that. <laughs> but when these tools became available in the 1920s, donut shops like this began opening. Uh, don't those guys look happy? <laughs> yeah, yeah those, are, those are some happy Jewish bakers. With all these new uh, donut shops op opening in places even like Bozeman, um, those guys are kind of funny. They, they don't look really trustworthy, do they? <laughs> no. But with all this gain of technology and productivity, what happened, though, is some bad things happened. And one of the unexpected consequences of this would be an unexpected consequence. <laughs> One of the unexpected consequences of this gains in productivity for cooking would be that you were separated from your food heritage. I mean, it used to be the only people that cooked your food was your grandmother or your aunt or your great aunt. Um, this change in productivity in the early 20th century separated us from our food supply and from our food heritage. And it, and it was, it was uh, we're still dealing with those results right now. A second consequence of this productivity was that we unfortunately got really good at hurting each other. And this is a picture of World War II. And uh, it was really a terrible conflict. There was a lot of misery occurred because of that. So let's change the subject and talk about donut dollies. These are ladies that made donuts for the troops in World War I. Isn't that a great smile there? Uh, these ladies would, they were in primitive conditions and they had to make donuts because these are the only ingredients they had was flour, sugar, and oil. But these Salvation Army ladies would make donuts for the troops. And uh, the troops just fell in love with the, the donuts and I think the dollies too. Yeah. I mean, what's not to like about that, you know? And um, the First World War, they tended to make the donuts by hand. Um, they would pin them out and they'd cut them and they'd drop them. And, and that's really uh, a nice way to do it, but you can't make that many donuts an hour. You can make eight or 10 dozen donuts an hour. What you need is a machine that can really ramp up your production. And this is an example of a, a machine that can make 100 do dozen donuts an hour. And this is in 1920, you know, which is 1920 high tech. Still looks pretty good now. 
Um, this was in the interwar period. Um, there are two main groups of donut dollies. There's the Red Cross and there's the Salvation Army. This is a Red Cross donut dolly um, making donuts. And you can see she has the new apparatus to make it with. But uh, you know, the nice thing about studying donuts is you see a lot of really happy people. And, <laughs> Yeah, see? <laughs> yeah, I always wondered about the Red Cross ladies and the Salvation Army's ladies, you know, duking it out on who's gonna make the donuts for the troops. This is one of the first food mobiles. You can see how modern it looks, but it was in, it followed the troops around in, in World War II. And, uh, it looks like a modern food truck, but it had a little donut shop in the back and it would follow the troops around and give them hot donuts. Do you think the GIs were happy to see this? <laughs> yeah. So, so talking about donuts and talking about technology, technology doesn't necessarily have to distance ourselves from each other. We can recapture our food heritage. This is, this is the donut shop. These are the usual suspects. Yeah, those guys are out of jail. Um, um, you can create community with technology and, and uh, you can connect with folks. Um, thanks for listening to this and uh, you guys have a good day.